strength. It is a foundational physical pursuit. It's the one physical pursuit that contributes to all other physical pursuits. So in other words, if you got a little stronger, you'll get a little better at everything else. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about strength. We're going to break it down into some components because how you train your strength matters. All right. Fun. Let's do it. There ain't nothing wrong with getting a little strong. Wow. <laughs> Am I, am I right? That's Bro, good, dude. For sure, he was thinking yeah. about that. I remember the, all fir morning. the first time in the I mirror, heard... I was like practicing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Justin's been saving that forever. He yeah. has been. Uh, I remember the first time I heard somebody communicate the value of strength uh, this way. It was Mark Ripito. He actually oh, yeah. said this, and he said Starting that strength. He's the first person I heard say that, and then he goes on to explain, and it's I mean it's one hundred percent true. If you want more. If you want to improve your functional flexibility, getting stronger will do that. Yep. If you want more endurance, getting stronger will contribute to that. If you want better balance, if you want pretty much any physical pursuit, if you get a little stronger, you'll notice improvements in all the others. Now, this isn't true with all the other physical pursuits. If you improve your endurance, you don't necessarily get stronger or get more functional flexibility. If you get more you know, functional flexibility, you don't necessarily get some of the other ones. So Strength is this kind of like, if you look at physical pursuits as a triangle, the base, it's at the base. So it's very important for everybody to kind of train. Also for, for your strength. athletic endeavors too. A hundred percent. You know, at what point do you <clears throat> think that tips over? Oh, when you start to take away focus from other things, when uh, like, it's I'm, so specialized that you lose sight of other, I, I would guess. I would guess or say yeah, okay, I'm, I'm asking that because I'm, I'm I'm picturing like a like a high school athlete, right, who's hasn't been introduced really to strength training or is yeah. about to get introduced to strength training. And just them doing the major compound lifts is going to contribute to whatever sport they play. I don't care if it's football, wrestling, oh, basketball, yeah. whatever. Just by doing that, they're going to get better at their their sport. But at some point, uh, the weight training is becomes when the and when the weight training becomes such a focus or you get beyond the that like uh base of strength uh -huh. i guess and it becomes like almost weightlifting becomes almost specialized then and then it starts to even take away so what how would you how would you tell a young athlete to approach that is where i'm getting yeah at. no so uh first off strength will always contribute to all the other physical pursuits if it were simply snapping my fingers and making you stronger the reason why you start to see <clears throat> a reduction in potential benefit is because it takes time to train for strength and when you're training as an athlete, especially as you become more and more advanced, if you're dedicating this much time to strength, to building strength, it means you're taking away time from being able to train for other things and you're limited by recovery. So it becomes much more complex. Yeah. Um, and then the strength gains you get need to be a little bit more specific because mm -hmm. like, for example, quarter squats, you know, you get a, a new athlete, like, a, like you don't want to do quarter squats. We want to get you good at being able to do full squats. But if you're a, a high-level basketball player, um, you're going to get tons of carryover from quarter squats, and you're not going to get as much damage, and you're not going to need to train as much time on working on the control mobility of a full squat. It's not going to have as much carryover, that kind of stuff. So it just gets much more specific. But o overall, if we could just snap your fingers, I mean, take any athlete. If you could just make them 10% stronger with a magic wand, would they not see improvements in everything else? Absolutely. Yeah, and I think too, like you can get to a point where you get really strong in, in like certain directions uh, to the point where your body then has to kind of compensate when you introduce other variables, other directions, other um, factors. Like, so if I have to like change directions and now, now my body's in a certain position, I'm not quite as strong in uh, sports and athletics. It, it's going to expose a lot more of... Um, I, I guess like multi-directional strength in terms of like your ability uh, to be able to react, respond, have strength uh, uh, outside of just this sort of linear focus. But what what's great about building up that base is you do build up that strength overall. You have to just consider the fact that um, that's not the end goal with it. You have to then uh, extend to that and build in, yes, your skill for your very specific sport, but also too, you have to get strong in uh, other directions. Yeah, I guess I was looking for a 
simpler answer and you guys both give me complicated answers. I'm, I'm picturing myself as like a parent of a high school student. I don't know very much about yeah. strength training. My son doesn't. Um, I listen to the show. I trust your guys' advice. Um, I want to advise my son on his pursuit in the weight room, even though football is his passion or basketball is his passion. You know, how much should he be focusing on getting st stronger versus going out and playing his sport more? Because I, I, and I, you kind of started to allude to it. Yeah. At what point does the strength training start to take away from the athletic training? That's obviously generally speaking. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's it's going to be a, a it's going to be just a sliver of your training. Obviously, the skill has got to be the most of your focus. And the cool thing about strength training is you don't need a lot of it to gain uh, benefit from it. So even if you mm. took a high school athlete and you had him lift once a week, he would get a lot of benefit from that and minimal. Take time taken away from you know. Yeah, I think it depends on how strong they are uh, to begin with, and like that's, you know what yeah, they're capable what they're capable of. Uh, because if it needs attention, and that's one of their biggest setbacks in terms of their performance in their sport, uh, you know that needs to be a focused effort to really build that base completely. So if you have a good base, then you can taper off. I think. On, okay, that's a good point, Justin. Tonight yeah. that that gets me closer to where, where I'm searching. Right. So if I have you were told, let's say by your coach, like, hey, you need to you put some size on, you're skinny or you're a lot lighter than the average athlete, like you need some more strength. Um, and, th and that's why you're lacking, right? That's what, and yeah. that's going to be a huge difference versus maybe you're a more built muscular kid already and you're already in the middle to the upper pack of strength and size naturally. Yeah that kid is more likely to overdo the strength training weight room time. He'd probably benefit more from movement and, and being skills. able to skill. Yeah. Like okay. So in, now we're getting closer to, I yeah. feel like a good kind of general advice for a parent who's trying to advise their kid on pursuing strength for their sport is understanding that if it's hindering them, right there, because they could be better at basketball or football if they were stronger, because more the most of the kids are stronger than they are. They would greatly benefit from the, the weight room versus if you were a kid who is middle of the pack or even the top of the pack, as far as strength wise, you're going to benefit more from your athletic endeavors than you than you would be spending even more time in the weight room. Yeah. Now, and you're also yeah, talking generally about speaking, yeah, a, a small uh, slice of the population. For the sake of this episode, you know, we're talking. Let's let's talk to the average person. Right. Right. The average person <laughs> who's trying to become more fit, more healthy, look better, have a faster metabolism, better hormone profile, just generally feel better, be more stable, um, and and just have improved health. Um, and so that's kind of what we'll communicate to because once we get to athletes, it starts to get, uh, it can get real, it can uh, get complex, really, really complex and, uh, specific, but for the average person, uh, getting stronger, you'll notice an improvement in the quality of your life across the board, but then it gets a little bit more, uh, specific in the sense that there are different types of strength that you sh can and should train for because it's going to give you better overall strength. So I'll give you I'll tell a story that kind of illustrates what I'm talking about. I mean, I started lifting weights uh, as a kid. I was 14 years old when I first started working out, never stopped since. And I, you know, I remember at 16, so this is two years after lifting, I'm a teenage boy, so full of testosterone. I remember going to work with my, my dad and he was, he would, you know, my dad was a towel setter. And I remember he was putting mud up on the walls. So this is like a real sticky type of uh, like glue that you put up on the wall and you, you know, you spread it out and put tile and stuff like that. And he had this, like, he would hold, he was holding this flat, it was like a flat square that he would hold with this handle and there would be a big pile of mud on it. And then he'd have his trowel in the other hand and he'd scoop it off that hand and throw it up on the wall, scoop it off the hand, throw it on the wall. And he was doing this all day. Now my job was to mix the, the cement, bring it, bring it to him and pour some of it on this thing that he was holding his hand. And so as he's doing this and I'm watching him and waiting to see if I need to put more on or whatever, that was, like I said, that was what I was doing. I made a comment, something like, man, you, you, that looks like fun. That looks real fun. <laughs> right. And he goes, you think you could do this? And I said, I mean, I don't, I mean, I could, I could tell it takes some skill, but I could try my arm. Not only did I not have the technique, but just my arm got it. so fatigued just because, holding it. yeah. And it was like, it was probably a, a, like 25 pounds, which doesn't sound like a lot, but all day he's yeah, holding this that's arm. a ton. Now, I, I curled all kind of, way more weight than that. I mean, at 16 years old, I was already really strong. I was already deadlifting almost 400 pounds and all this other stuff. And here he is 
holding this mud. And I remember doing it for like maybe three minutes trying to do it while he's laughing at me or whatever. And my arm was just on fire. And I, I realized that there are different types of strength. Because had him and I gone to deadlift or do curls, I could probably lift more than him. But I couldn't have this isometric kind of like contracted, stable position yeah. doing this particular thing. And that was the first time I kind of realized that, oh, there's different kinds of strength. Mm -hmm. And when you work out in the gym, you can train all of them or different ones. And doing so will give you more of a complete package. You'll, number one, you're going to have a better physique as a result. There'll be no holes. You'll have less injury and you'll just feel better because all of these uh, types of strength are expressed in the real world. So you'll notice in the real world, if you only train one and not the others, that you'll try doing other things like moving a couch and you'll wonder why you get so fatigued when you work out all the time. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Powerlift. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale right now. MAPS Anabolic Advanced, half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. How long have we been aware of this? Like when you think, I know you guys are more into looking back in like old, uh, you know, way old people used to, or older guys, like as far as old timey type stuff, how they used to train. How long have we been aware of the different types of strength and were there specific exercises, specific yes. people that like specialized in different types of feats? Like They were aware uh, I mean, right big, away. Yeah. Well, even back in, in the Roman days, right? The, the inception of the Olympics, like they, they would uh, do these strength feats and um, that were, you know, produce these types of like granite looking bodies. And you just saw like, um, you know, the people used to marvel at these, these feats that they used to do. And then that kind of translated into a lot of the things we saw with like the bronze uh, era guys that would, uh, you know, just lift um, benches full of people and do like these bent presses. And it, they're very much of a different strength focus. I think back then because of the hard labor, I yeah. think hard labor was a big part of that. If anything, we forgot not that we just became, we became aware. They were aware of this way early yeah. because early strength training was all about, first off, uh, they would have to display it to an audience. If you were a, a strength athlete in the bronze era and you wanted to somehow make a living doing it, you would do it by doing demonstrations. The demonstrations to the average person, if you did a deadlift with a barbell, the average person, person back then would look at it and be like, I don't know, is it a lot of weight? I mean, I guess you could have people come try it, Yeah, but they'd look at it and, but you'd have to, so what they would do is they would lift objects that people could recognize, like, yeah. like a heavy iron wagon wheel or it was like a sideshow, almost like a vaudeville, <laughs> yeah. like they'd travel and they'd do these like performances yeah. for people. Or they would bend a horseshoe, right. Yeah. Or hold a, 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 a young woman up in the air for a long time, right? Or do stuff like that. Yeah, so roll that, a fi frying pan or something. Yeah, like yeah exactly. Yeah, 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 crush things. Yeah. yeah, so they were very, people were very aware and then they would challenge each other. So yeah, oh great, you could lift a really heavy rock that I can't, but can you hold this bucket of water at arm's length for five minutes, right? So then mm -hmm. I'd challenge you and then you couldn't do that. And then you'd say, okay, but can you take this nail and with one hit, hit it through a plank of wood or whatever. So they were very aware of the different uh, types of strength. And so they used to train them. Yeah. They would train all of them. So you didn't see these strength athletes only training a particular way. They would train in many different ways so that they could do these competitions and these performances and demonstrate their feats. The result of which being these really incredibly fit, athletic, mobile, strong, healthy, natural bodies way before uh, anabolic steroids, a performance enhancing drug. I mean, they, they, this is before supplements. They just ate food and worked. They all had jobs. Uh, very few of them actually able to support themselves fully doing this. Um, so they worked full time and then they trained their bodies and then they would do these, these uh, displays. I remember when you guys first started showing me some of these, uh, you know, athletes in the bronze era, uh, or weightlifters, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I don't recall ever seeing pictures. Like I don't feel like it was celebrated or highlighted like today. It just yeah. I assume that they didn't have physiques. Whenever I saw like a 
old poster or a clipping that was black and white of someone doing like that. They actually never really uh, showed like a, a, a physique that looked really good. So I just assumed that it just, that didn't happen until way later. But I've now seen all kinds of physiques back then that looked amazing. Yeah. yeah. Is there a reason why maybe that like they didn't care about that as much? Is that why? They, like they did, but uh, what was more impressive to was the, the feats audience strength. back then was what you could right. do. Yeah. Because it was. You'll still hear this today, by the way. This is an instinct that especially guys will have. What, what, do, you, what do you see? This is annoying, by the way, but you'll see like a like a buff dude walking down the street and then yeah. some some insecure dudes are looking at him. What do you bitch? Or they'll, no, they'll, or they'll say something <laughs> like- Steroids. Oh yeah, or they'll say yeah. something like, yeah, but I bet he can't fight or whatever, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Instinct, instinctively, you know, it's like, but what can you do, right? That's always what comes out. Well, back then it was all about what you could do. Yeah. So if you looked pretty- and you look nice and you were not doing anything like you were really, yeah, really quick. Everybody would discount you like, oh, that guy. Oh, yeah, he looks good. But what does he do? He can't do anything. Type well, of deal, so. wasn't like one of the first crossovers Sandow because he had like that really impressive physique. Yes. that like turned it into bodybuilding <clears throat> because bodybuilding, I feel like it just started along his era. Right. It, no, it happened later. The the But so the original or like modeled after him. Yeah. Right? So it was. They were, they were challenges. So way before that, it was like circuses and stuff like that. And then these strong men, strong women, by the way, there were women too oh, back yeah. then. Oh, yeah. Dude, some of these women were, were crazy strong. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, like I don't remember what her name. What was her name? Pudgy Stockton, I think, uh -huh. carried a 600-pound cannon. <laughs> what? Yeah. She carried what a, a 600 pound yeah. cannon. It was a chick. Yeah. Uh, and this was, this was, by the way, women who are, who, you know, they had like to promote like uh, empowerment and stuff like that. Like this was back in the day when if you were outside of the house or outside of the kitchen, uh, like people would like say something to you. Mm -hmm. And here was this woman who was, who would go on a stage. She would do these lifts and challenge men, mm -hmm. and she would put them to shame. So oh, this is wow. yeah, this is pretty cool. But anyway, they would have challenges. That's how it started, and then they started creating shows. And the shows were first they were challenges. Then they somebody was really smart and included a physique round. So they would come up, they would do mm -hmm. some kind of a challenge, maybe a competition with each other, who could do most handstand push-ups or who could lift the, you know, the, the most with the bent press or something like that. And then there was a physique round. Don't you think that would be cool if they brought that back today? Of course. For I think that sure would be would. so cool. It would change the physique. Especially since, I mean, we've gotten to a level now where like you go to a, like a Mr. Olympia and everybody looks fucking yeah. insane. Like everybody looks amazing. How many yeah. egos do you think will get crushed if right. there was an actual... Because now you have to do something with that body. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it would be cool. Yeah. And I, I think it would be a, a much better way to separate them because they're now at a point where... Man, it's so subjective. Like it's so like everybody mm -hmm. looks so good. The guy who comes in last place, could, like most people that don't know how to how the bodies even get judged, would be like, I don't get it. I don't yeah, understand no. what. So it would be cool to add an element into the the show where it's like now you have to do like this bent press or do some or you get to choose right. You have yeah. a couple of different feats. You definitely get somebody like me more interested. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm out. You know, I care less. You just turn yeah for you. It's just a pageant. You know, it is, yeah. I yeah. mean, although like to give the guys credit, you know. The, most of them can do something pretty fucking strong and impressive. Like, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, a lot of bodybuilders are strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like you, if you got that massive, that big, you, you're not, you're, you're not yeah, weak. I'm not, I'm not discounting that, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. So, all right, let's talk about one of the types of strengths uh, that you can display that you should also train and practice on, um, and that's max strength. This is what most people would uh can, they, this is what most people think about if you were to mention strength is they would think of this type of strength and it's basically your ability to generate maximal force it's your ability to lift something heavy one time mm -hmm. so it's like you know like how much can you deadlift how much can you bench press how much can you squat can you lift that really heavy thing off the ground or press that really heavy thing uh, in the air um, this is an important type of strength to train it is specific, meaning uh, you train for this to get this. There is carryover to other types of strength, but it's important for everybody to develop the ability to generate maximal force through a range of motion, okay? Through a range of motion, meaning not just force, but force and movement. So like a squat uh, would be an example. Um, and this is, again, everybody yeah. should train this at some point this becomes less important when you start to get really strong mm -hmm. but within the first at least three years of training 
this is a very important type of strength to train for. You know what's interesting about this portion is um, the rituals involved with being able to get in that mindset and be able to uh, recruit as much uh, muscle fibers and force as possible. Like everybody has kind of their own thing. And it's <laughs> like, you know, whether it's like crazy, crazy hype music or it's breathing, like certain erratic breathing, or it's like, you know, slapping somebody or, <laughs> you know, it's just, I, I'm always very fascinating to see how people can get into that headspace to lift like the most maximal amount of weight possible. I, I wish this was actually communicated better to me. Uh, cause even as a trainer, like I, I told you guys, like I'd never, I never maxed out. I thought, I thought it was silly. I thought it was too high of risk for the reward. Uh, I cared about how I looked. I didn't care about proving how much I could deadlift or squat I was relatively strong. So I didn't care. Um, but the irony of that was when I started to train more like a strong man or learn how to lift like a power lifter, the benefits and carryover that I got from aesthetics. I wish I understood that earlier. I think I would have got to my destination much faster as far as the, the physique that I was trying to build as a young man. But I avoided it because, again, I fell into that that category of people who look at the way people train as like a, a camp. Like, yeah. oh, one rep max, like I'm not a power lifter. So I don't why have, train that. Yeah, why train that way? Why would I ever train that way? And it's only risky to I might That's hurt a myself. good question. Why train why train to develop max strength? Number one, it's training your central nervous system to fire with incredible force to get your muscles to organize for one concentrated effort. And it also builds and strengthens the tendons and ligaments like nothing else. Yeah. So that's why it's very important. This I did not because I knew it was a great way to build a physique, but because uh, there was always an infatuation I had with uh, strength athletes. And so I, I liked <clears throat> to try doing that. When I started applying this to clients, because I never trained clients in low reps until the back half of my career. It wasn't until the back half of my career when I started reading books that were written at the turn of the century by people from the bronze era when I started to say, God, you know, I, I, within, with good form and technique and all that stuff and appropriate, I used to start putting clients through cycles of training yeah. for max strength. It became my secret weapon. Why? Because no trainers yeah. were training average no, people. Nobody was touching it. I mean, because especially women. Yes. Yeah. And there's so many, I mean, there's prerequisites involved, obviously, before we get to that level where it's like, let's go ahead and, and get after it and go for like our max output um, just because of safety. And, and, and so I think that there was a bit of a, a hesitation there amongst coaches and trainers. But really, like you said, like I... Same thing in my career, like later on, because that was such a high concern was like, I don't want to injure anybody. I don't want to hurt anybody, but really like to, to be able to build that, that capacity to, to, you know, really show them what they're capable of. It, it really just, it bled into everything else, uh, after that, in terms of their ability to get strong in these other strength pursuits. Oh, it was, it was my secret weapon because they, people who'd been with trainers before and all that stuff. And I'd look at their workouts and I'd know they'd never trained this way. And I'd start them out that way. And within two months, they were just, they, they would get blown away by the results. Speaking of safety, now everything has to be done properly. Okay. So that, let's just understand that context. But heavy deadlifting, heavy squatting, heavy overhead pressing, like just heavy training like this appropriately is what actually made my clients the most bulletproof mm -hmm. against injuries. Yeah. That's the irony. Yes. Well, it's also, it's it's relative to well, the, the individual, right? So if you... You have somebody, right? We all have had this client who um, is never lifted really heavy or one rep max or ever below five or six reps, but they train eight, 10, 12, 15 reps all day yeah. long. And they have a weight that they choose every single time with that. It's simply taking that same person and going, hey, let's add 25 pounds to the bar, which you've never done before. And if you only get four or five, it's okay. you know. Or let's add 50 pounds to the bar. And if you only get two or three, it's okay. So it's it's all relative to where they're currently at, where where they where how much you loaded. It's not like you take somebody who's no, it's like got to be appropriate. Yeah, yeah, somebody who's never lifted before. Like, Let's just slap yeah, on two hundred pounds an on their back right away. Yeah, yeah. no, and my so, max deadlift with some of my clients was the bar. You know, this was like my older clients. They right. would lift the bar for the first time. 
Um, and that would be their, you know, us training low reps. Look, Doug is a good example. Doug's, uh, was my client came to me because of back pain. He could not fix chronic low back pain. Do you know how we fixed it? Heavy deadlifts. Yeah. That a back exercise literally got him to pull 400 pounds and the, the, the way his back used to bother him and hurt and all that stuff disappeared. And it was from training, uh, in this particular fashion. So, uh, it's got tremendous value. Now, when you train this, there's a couple things you want to consider. One is you're obviously training a low reps. Okay. Two, you're not maxing out all the time. So I know we're talking about max strength, but to train for best max strength, you've got to train with sub maximal weight. Meaning let's say I do sets of two reps in a lift. So I'm doing a set with just two. It's not the, I'm not picking a weight where I can only do two. I'm picking a weight where I could do four. But now what I do is I do five sets of two reps. That's how you build maximal strength. When you're ready to test yourself is when you go for the max. That's not how you work out yeah. in this uh, yeah. low rep. But few exercises, lots of sets, compound lifts, low reps. That's uh, the, the That's general the recipe, recipe yeah. for building max strength. And you can apply it to any exercise, but compound lifts are going to give you the most bang for your buck. Uh, you know, training single joint exercises like this, there's not a lot of, uh, not a ton of, uh, of value in comparison. Yeah, so, yeah. all right, the next one is strength stamina. This is a type of strength as well. Now, we're not talking about lung capacity or VO2 max, although that plays a role. Uh, we're talking about the ability for your muscles to generate strength repeatedly. Mm -hmm. So like- Your example you gave with your dad. Yeah, well, that, that would be more That's, of the isometric, which right. we'll get to. But I, it would be more like uh, a set of 25 reps in the barbell squat, right? You would was, consider his flicking up the, the up. Oh, uh, I was talking about the arm that was holding. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. oh, oh, I think I thought you were explaining. Well, yeah, the, the reps involved with oh, that continuously. Well, that arm, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and the arm flicking up the, yeah, that for sure. Oh, I'm glad you made that clear. Because that when I was picturing you trying to do that, I, I was thinking even more so the the, the, the It was flick. the hand holding the, oh, the, yeah, the metal, yeah. the, the flat yeah. plate with the mud that I couldn't believe how tired it got. You didn't hold that kind of weight for that yeah. long of a time and yeah it makes a huge but i mean that's but, great great yeah. still example right so there's an example of there's there's two different types of yeah my of, right hand is the repeated stamina yeah yeah and the left hand was holding the the, the mud for uh, you know for that just for that time but yeah strength stamina is reps can you repeatedly generate strength so here's a great example uh, let's compare what we just talked about max strength to strength stamina you could be somebody who can squat 500 pounds and all you do is train max strength. Then somebody puts 200 pounds, less than half mm -hmm. on the bar, and they tell you to squat it for 30 reps, and you can't. Yeah, That's a common example, by the way, is that somebody for 30 reps wouldn't be able to do that who could squat 500 pounds. So just to give you an example how specific strength can, can be and why you want to kind of, why you yeah. want to train both. You see fatigue setting in and how that affects the body and how it literally like shuts parts of your system down. Like you just start shutting down if you don't have that kind of long-term strength. It's the yeah. worst. And, um, and, and it's, it's one of those, it's very exposing, especially if you are that kind of person that like, you just like to lift heavy weights and then somebody takes you through something around 15 to 20 reps and you just buries you. Oh my, it's, <laughs> it's embarrassing. And, um, it, it just highlights that, uh, there's different, completely different types of, of strength. And this is also a necessary uh, part that's very functional in real world situations. Yeah. So. I think of uh, ranchers, cowboys. Yeah. That's what comes to mind. Being able to, you know, stack 70 bales of hay, you know, in a oh, day, geez. you yeah. know what I'm saying? Or hauling fence posts and, yeah. and, and nailing down a whole, you know, acre worth of, of fence posts in a day, just like, that ability to just hammer something out like that for hours all day long, and one an average person would do four yeah, or five. They're of almost days. as strong at the end of the day as they were at the beginning. Right, yeah. right. Bodybuilders actually have uh, are good examples of strength stamina. Bodybuilders because of the high volume, lots of supersets and tries. Yeah, and just sets, uh, yeah. okay. Today's chest day. You take a power lifter and a bodybuilder go to work out, and this is what the workout would look like. The power lifter would be stronger than the bodybuilder in the beginning. But about halfway through the workout, you know, set number 15, 
all the the power lifter just his muscles don't work this anymore. This is how I always got Justin. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. This Sucks. is where this is where this is where I was good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I never trained the one rep. You bury me all day long. I'm hard out of the gates, and then uh, yeah. I was just dogging Single it doubles and triples, but give yeah. me 45 minutes in, bro. <laughs> I got this guy. You know, yeah. So, yeah. Now sure. this this uh, is also a type of. By the way, all the ones that we're going to talk about today um, contribute to muscle growth. All of them uh, cont- are the most effective thing you could do for muscle growth when it's novel, meaning if you always train in one, then training in one of the other ones will give you some like really fast initial gains. That's why one of the reasons why it's so good to cycle through these is because the body gets, becomes really adapted to one and then switching to a new one. It's a new stimulus and the body just responds along with, of course, developing a better, uh, more well-rounded physique. This kind of training also produces really good pumps, so for those of you who really enjoy that feeling in the gym where the muscles get really full and tight and you like to see what you look like if, if you were a little bit more developed, like stamina strength type training, high volume, higher rep type training is a surefire way to do it. It's like the guaranteed, uh, you know, uh, way to do it. Um, and, it, and, it's, uh, and it does increase blood flow. It does burn a lot of calories and it does contribute to traditional endurance much more. Uh, than max strength. Yeah, I think this one this one has more cardiovascular benefits yes. for sure because yes. of all the the blood and oxygen pumping through your body. I was going to ask you what what are the things that you think really that that contribute to this more so than like the single rep. So you're going to get the cardiovascular. You're going to get the uh, like, stave off fatigue. Yeah, like muscle a lot longer, stamina. Yes. Right, that you're going to get from it. You get the pumps and probably uh, benefits of hypertrophy from in yes. there. Uh, what else would you say? Is, well, I think it's uh, this is tends to be easier on the joints, so long as your form and technique mm-hmm. are good. Um, so, so if you have good, now if you have bad technique, stamina, strength training can be terrible. I've seen so many examples of loose, crazy form, but if it's really good, it can be easier on the joints. So let's say you're older, uh, you've mm-hmm. been working out for a long time. You're already pretty strong. You'll probably spend more time here than you will, or you probably Less should. risky, yeah. You know, in yes. terms of on your joints there you and, go. and yeah, like the stress you're going to get in the ligaments and things. So, uh, it, it I think it does have a bit more. It, it weighs higher in the longevity spectrum. Yeah, and then lots of health benefits. I mean, they all have health benefits, but this one you can all you can throw in some of the benefits of cardio in with this type of training. I mean, go do a barbell squat set with 30 reps and tell me you're not getting some cardio, uh, you know, benefits from that. You're going to for sure. So, um, now people in the strength and muscle building world will tell you that this produces round looking muscles, whereas max strength type training will give you that kind of like hard granite look. Anecdotally, I think there's some truth to that. There's zero science and studies to support any of what I just said with that. But in my experience, training myself and training other people, and it's a small effect, so it's not like a, you're, it's like this dramatic difference. Yeah. But it does. There's, there's a different, a different look different to my look. body. Yeah. When I train one uh, versus the other, uh, I, it was. I mean, it was dramatic for me. I felt like it was. It was I think it was dramatic for you because you had you were so long. Right. I was. One extre- I was an extreme example yeah. of it. Right. I was. And extreme you had so much muscle. You're a pro. Right? I was an extreme example of somebody who trained like hypertrophy, high rep, superset, very much so in the you know stamina strength department, not the max strength department at all for years, a decade uh, of training that way, and then switched over to training. And I, there was a, a, a very obvious physical. A change to my body and it wasn't just that i added more muscle it was like the way the muscle looked on my body mm-hmm. it was very clear to me that i'd always had this like ability to air up right in the training in the strength stamina where i'd get these bubbly looking muscles and i would look full and then after an hour or two i'd have this kind of deflated look i wouldn't feel like i looked as muscular where when i started training max strength I, my body didn't get as big and round during the workout, but then the muscle that I built on my body felt like it stayed on there even when I wasn't aired up, yeah. if that makes sense. Like yeah. That's the best way I can describe what that was like for me to to go through that, that transition, but I felt like it was dramatic. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like when I train like this, um, I feel uh, if I'm not, if I'm if I do it well, sometimes I can overtrain with this because this adds a lot of volume. Okay, but I feel good. I feel healthy. I feel uh, like I got good. You know, my my muscles are working really well. When I train with a lot of max strength, I feel solid 
uh, in my body. I just feel really like solid and tight. Uh, so it's a different feel as well on the inside. All right, the next one, this one we can label as grit uh, because I can't necessarily think of a better uh, description that the average person would understand. Isometric, you know, strength would be what we would use uh, the, the, the trainer jargon. Mm -hmm. But grit is your ability to maintain and control um, tension. This, I also ex have a great uh, story to tell where right. I experienced this myself. And this is when, as an adult, as a young adult, after years and years and years of lifting weights, I was 200 and at this time, I was a big boy at this point. I was like 220. I went and went and signed up for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And uh, these were with the Gi. And I remember in the class, as I'm learning, as I'm taking the classes, I'm a strong dude. I'm stronger than anybody in the class. I'm the strongest guy in there for sure. Okay. But halfway through, my hands will just stop functioning. I couldn't hold on to people's Gi anymore because so much of Jiu Jitsu is grip and grip training and then holding people in a position if you're on top or on the bottom, maintaining guard, maintaining grips. And I remember like, I, even though I'm the strongest guy, I've got the biggest muscles in there. Like that was it. Like once that, I, it was done. I couldn't isometrically hold anymore. And then I was like, you could just take me apart. Mm -hmm. um, that's a different type of strength is the ability to maintain steady tension. Here's another example. New dads will, will, will understand this. So if you're listening right now, you work out, you became a new dad, you probably were embarrassed about how tired your arm got holding your kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you got a baby, literally a 20 pound baby and you're holding them. And you're like, man, my arm is tired. I go do curls with 50 pound dumbbells and I'm holding my baby right now trying to do stuff with the other hand and my biceps on fire. Like what the hell's you know, going the, on? The coolest part about this one is this is probably the safest one to train. hundred percent. Yeah. And 100%. what's really, what's really cool is if you have somebody, if you're a coach uh, or trainer and you have somebody of advanced age and you're hearing us talk about all these different benefits of building, you know, max strength or strength, uh, this is a great place to start a lot of your clients who you're not certain yet if they can handle the other types of, of strength training because it has tremendous benefits and it's really easy to start anybody at at any level. It's I, why I love using this. It also causes the least amount of damage. You could train it the most frequently. Um, and there's this weird myth out there that isometric training or training for that kind of stability or hold or the ability to maintain that kind of tension is not a muscle building form of training. That is so wrong. It's not even funny. In fact, it is the best muscle building method in the initial short term. That's mm -hmm. what studies will show. Now, eventually it falls off very quickly if that's all you do. And then the other forms of training are superior. But if I only had to train somebody for three weeks, and I wanted to show maximal muscle and strength gain, and I took and you gave me beginner, and I was competing against someone else. This would get them more strength and muscle in the first three weeks than anything else. That's what the studies show. Now, for everybody else, if you work out and you're fit and you're consistent, if you just inject this kind of training into your routine every two or three months for a couple weeks, or you inject this kind of training into your normal routine here and there you'll get a uh, tremendous benefit. There's so many interesting um, factors to isometric training. Like even the, the fact that you get strong 15 degrees in both sides of whatever it is that you're whatever contracting, angle. whatever angle you're contracting, it's going to carry over 15 degrees on both sides of that strength curve, uh, which, you know, sounds kind of interesting, but it's, it, you start to understand how that now translates to feeling stronger in different positions that you're holding. Uh, which a lot of times uh, when you're doing regular lifts, like say you're doing it in the max lifting portion, there's a little bit of a weak spot somewhere, uh, which this will inevitably fill and you're, it will send that signal. Everything is accounted for stable and strong. So you can apply like even more or, or a consistent amount of force uh, to be able to even lift more weight. And, and then on top of that too, it has an analgesic effect where uh, say, you know, there's, there's an instability or, or your, your, body kind of has this natural governing system in it to be able to tighten up and restrict movement and keep you kind of from injuring anything further where if you start like holding a position and trying to increase that range of motion very gradually and you squeeze and you tense you're sending a signal now that it's it's 
it's stable again. And so now the pain signal kind of dampers down. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that, that the pain signal oftentimes isn't necessarily because there's an injury, but rather because your body's trying to prevent you from doing a particular a weakness type of movement. Yeah. And this kind of training tells the body it's strong. But there's, I mean, to your original like um, comparison of or, or, or example of uh, like construction, like, I mean, any, I just remember for me having to be in really uncomfortable positions. I unnaturally would like, I would never be in, right. I'd be like, like underneath under the, yeah. Yeah, the house and I'm having to fix something, but propping myself with one arm and just holding this position uh, to try and make sure that I can like stop a leak or something yeah. into the house. And it's like, it's just, it's, it's a very strange, like, um, way of thinking about strength, but to be able to hold myself and maintain that position for a good amount of time, like required, uh, it was exhausting. It, it, it fully like floored me sometimes. There's a viral clip right now going around of a old uh, ex bodybuilder who claims to only do isometric and negative training now. Have you wow. seen this? No. Yeah, he, and it, the, in the clip, it's a very short clip, but he's 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 talking. I mean, again, like it, social media, it's like extreme, right? All this other things a waste, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it it, lo it lost me on the everything else is a waste, but obviously, like many things that go viral, there there's some truth to it, and that he's basically making the case that you know that the eccentric portion of the exercise and the isometric portion are the most valuable portions of any exercise and so why waste any time doing all that damage on the other one that has the least amount of return by working on the concentric yeah. and so i mean again i i some truth yeah, yeah. some truth some to that but it just shows you too though the, how valuable it is you could have somebody who that's all they train and actually build a legit physique from it yeah you were, about, you were talking about you're talking about construction did you ever you, you guys ever do this where you're like with your dad or your uncle or someone as a kid and he's like hey hold this up for me while i you know try oh yeah to something overhead yeah <laughs> oh and you're just like God. oh you know <laughs> it's like and they're doing all the work <laughs> everything's and collapsing it. <laughs> yeah that, that's 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 this type of strength that we're yeah, talking about yeah. yep did you find something there Doug? i didn't find it no uh -oh. okay never mind he had that, he, he had that look right know, that like, yeah. <laughs> it's like he was gonna say you gotta something. shake your head yeah. so, i mean there's a there is a guy uh -uh. named uh -uh. richard monison but i don't know if he's the one Oh, I have no idea. Uh, uh, but yeah, so this this kind of training uh, builds muscle. It builds tremendous solid stability. It, it is very safe, very, very safe. Literally pushing against an immovable object means you're not moving. So you know, your, yeah. your risk of injury you goes You can back low. off at any time. You can back off at any time, apply as much or as little um, you know, tension as you want. And there's different ways to do this. It could be as easy as uh, holding a heavy weight above your head for time or out at arm's length for time or holding something uh, like a suitcase or a farmer's walk and just holding it uh, for time. It could also be pushing against something that won't move as hard as you can or just holding your body in a position for as long as you can or for you know extended periods. This That's how you would train uh, this kind of training. And if you've never done it before, Try it, and you'll be surprised at how maybe strong you are at other stuff, how weak you are at something like this. And that just goes to show you the potential benefit that yep. could possibly be Lots there. Lots of value here. Yeah, that's another thing I want to mention. All the ones that we're talking about, if you go to the gym tomorrow after listening to this, and you test one of them, because you're like, you know, I never trained that way, and you find that you're terrible at it, that is a huge opportunity. Huge potential. For, for, for your body to progress. Like this, I learned much later in my career. I wish I knew this as a kid. But when you find something in the gym, if you're advanced and you find something in the gym that you're not good at, even lean, after you've been working out for it. years, you are you just found a way that you could get your body to, to really progress and grow. Whether it's an exercise or a rep range or a, or, or a style of training, I, I actually later on started to figure out to look for these types of things. Yeah. That I sucked at. This is what's made me infatuated with moving in and out of different types of uh, modalities and going because I figured that out. After you've been doing this as long as any of us have been doing it, it's like it's tough to continue to see this this these gains that you are chasing through training the same way that you've kind of trained always. Like so, finding unique exercises or unique ways to train. Uh, always, you know, creates that that novel stimulus, and that's where the most amount of, especially when you're advanced, you're going to get. I mean, sure, it has all kinds of benefits, like we said earlier about a beginner and and incorporating all these. But there's everybody listening right now 
could apply one of these three and i guarantee they suck at at least one of them if not two of them yeah. for sure like yeah. everybody there's i've yet to meet anybody who i think is got all three of these like nailed down that you're really really strong and all we tend to neglect one or two so of them. i have three examples of uh, bronze era athletes who demonstrated each of these in their strength performances and feats or how they trained that are great examples. Um, so if we go to max strength, maybe Doug, you can look up George Hackenschmidt and look up uh, his, Hackenschmidt. look up his max one arm bent press. Now he was the one to break Eugene Sandow's record. So and he was widely known as the strongest um, at, like max uh, type of strength. This was a, by the way, if you see a picture of this guy, I mean, you, you, <laughs> if you didn't know yeah. that they didn't take, that the, that steroids didn't exist back then, you wouldn't believe it because yeah. the guy He's looked a like, beast. yeah, I mean, he, he was also a wrestler and, um, but Doug, while Doug's pulling up, pull up his, uh, his one arm max uh, bent press, you should be able to see a, a number there. Was something like 270 pounds or something like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, now, Sandow got up to 271. Okay, so wow, that's crazy. Um, I know Hackenschmidt beat that. Yeah, I'm not seeing that offhand. I see his overhead press. What's his but, overhead press? Well, it's, it's a snatch, uh, 196 pounds. With one arm. With one arm, yeah. yeah. Just crazy, just crazy amounts of strength. Then stamina, Eugene, you mentioned Eugene Sandow. A lot of people don't know this. Eugene Sandow would often train in the 50 to 60 rep range with dumbbells. Oh, dang. Yeah. <laughs> so he would grab light dumbbells and do sets of 50 to 60 reps. Um, and so, uh, you know, he would demonstrate, you know, this kind of, uh, you know, kind of strength stamina in, in some of his training. Grit, I got someone for, for you. The Mighty Adam. Maybe, Doug, you could look him up and show, uh, maybe look up some of his stuff. He was this little, like, muscular, strongman dude. Yeah. Kind of crazy looking kind of hair. Kind of hair, yeah. Yeah, kind of crazy yeah, hair. kind of crazy guy. But he would do things like bend... Uh, like prison bars and oh, stuff yeah. like that <laughs> in demonstrations and uh, horseshoes. And uh, he was this, this little uh, like granite looking kind of dude that just had this crazy hand strength in particular. For you remember how his, tall and how much he weighed? He he was, I don't know if Doug pulled him up already. But those yeah, are his name was uh, Joe Greenstein. Um, yeah. But they called him Mighty Adam. The Mighty Adam. That was his Adam. performance. Yeah. yeah. Like, like an Atom. Yeah. Uh, Not Adam. So he would pull a train with his teeth, stop a plane from taking off with his hair, <laughs> bending <laughs> iron what? bars with his bare hands. Yeah. yeah. That one I remember, which I always love to see that because it's, it's, it's one of those you can put context to it and be like, oh, yeah, I've actually tried. Like, you know, I've tried to do that. That oh, must yeah. take a lot of force that he just He was 5'4 and 140 pounds. Oh, yeah. 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 So Little he guy. was, yeah. So the story with him was he weighed four pounds at birth. This was in 1893 and he had tiny. health issues and doctors are like, he's not going to live longer than a couple hours. Well, of course he, he did survive. And then he became this guy that would just do these feats of strength. Uh, yeah. He would break uh, uh, like chain, a chain with his teeth. Oh my <laughs> like God. Awesome. Yeah, of course he has like a story like that, would, right? Yeah. It's really, really cool stuff. But yeah, he, he, he if everybody, by, by the way, there's other attributes of strength that we didn't cover, like speed, uh, strength, power. That's also important. The reason why I'm not talking about it here is because it requires a lot more skill. And right now, again, we're communicating to the average person. Yeah, these are, um, I think these are like the three most basic that no matter what your pursuit is, you should find a way to rotate through. Exactly. Maybe that's what you talk about right now is what the phasing looks like for something like this. And, and I know there's a lot of different ways that we could program this because- you could easily uh, be in a phase or like say I could train strength stamina for a year straight rotating exercises and, and right. all these other things and still get the benefits of it. But how would you suggest to somebody that's listening that was writing their own program or following their own workout, how to incorporate this uh, to get the max There's two main ways to, to do this. One is to, is to incorporate some of each and every workout. The other is to focus on one for a few weeks to maybe a couple months and then move to another one. I tend to favor focusing on one, mm -hmm. moving to the next one, because each one of these requires such a different mental space right. uh, and a different, Completely different focus. feel yeah. and focus and attitude. Plus combining them, uh, although there's nothing wrong with that at all, it's a great way to train as well, requires a lot more careful programming and planning, I would say. 
people tend to, because when you're mixing stamina with max strength with grit, you really got to understand workout programming and the same workout to know where to place what and, and you know how to place the focus. But that would be pretty much it. Um, yeah. And if you spend a little time in each of these, you'll get a better body over time than you will if you don't. And that's the, the, the lesson of today's episode. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our fitness guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal, and they're all free. They're free, 100% free. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump DeStefano, and Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. 